employees of the U.S. Air Force. They're not in the military, yet they take the same oath. They don't wear the uniform, but they stand shoulder to shoulder with those who do. They're patriotic, hard-working Americans. They are the everyday heroes of Air Force civilian service. Forces joined. Good evening, and thank you for joining us tonight for Aim Higher, Empower Your Ambition. If you're a college student or recent graduate, having graduated in the past two years, this episode of Aim Higher is for you, as we explore the tremendous opportunities provided by AFCS internships. In addition to providing you with real-world, hands-on experience in uniquely relevant and high-demanding career fields, AFCS internships can lead to the one thing similar internship programs miss a highly rewarding job in your field upon successful completion of the program. For tonight's live webinar, I'm going to introduce you to three AFCS interns who've successfully completed their paid summer internships as part of the Premier College Internship Program, better known as PSIP, and now having graduated in transition to their Palace Acquire or PAC internship for recent graduates. PAC is a paid full-time two to three year training program for graduates interested in science and engineering, financial management, cyber IT, civil engineering, intel, and more. It includes promotions and yearly salary increases based on performance and supervisor approval, of course. Best of all, when successfully completed, the interns become full-time AFCS employees integral to the defense of our nation. Our panelists will reflect on their experiences, the career paths they took to get where they are now, and offer tips on steps you can take to follow in their footsteps. After the show, be sure to visit afintern.com where you'll find everything you need to know about these great opportunities. And now, without further ado, you know, my copywriter really cracked himself up with that one. I tell one dad joke and now my script is peppered with them. <clears throat> As I was saying, without further ado, let me introduce you to these exceptional interns or better yet, let me have them introduce themselves. Grace, if you'd be so kind to kick us off. Thanks so much, Ryan. Good evening and hello, everyone. My name is uh, Catherine Grace Botworth. I'm 28 years old and I am based here at Robbins Air Force Base in middle Georgia. Um, I received my bachelor's in business administration with a, a concentration in organizational behavior in December of 2023 after completing my PSIP or Premier College Intern Program in the summer of 2023. Um, and as of last week, I received a letter from my alma mater stating that I got accepted into the MBA program that I will be starting in August. So I'm very excited and looking forward to that journey. But like I mentioned, I'm a first time PAC trainee. I mean, I'm only in my third month here uh, at Robin. So there's still so much to learn and so much information that I'm trying to retain, but I kind of feel like a, a little fish in a big ocean, but honestly, I'm ready to take on any challenge that comes my way. I'm just excited to see where the journey takes me. Um, as for like what I'm doing in my PAC work, I'm um, spending a lot of my time just kind of completing my DAU courses, which stands for Defense Acquisition University. I have a long list of those to do. And a few weeks ago, I kind of started working on some programs and learning them as well. Very cool. Thank you, Grace. Hey, and congratulations on acceptance to your master's program. What an accomplishment that is, huh? All right. Thank let's you. meet yes, our sir. <laughs> You're very welcome. Let's meet our next panelist, Eric. Eric, go ahead. Hey, good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is Eric Voss. I'm 22 years old. I'm currently located out in Los Angeles at the Los Angeles Air Force Base. I did my undergraduate degree at San Diego State University, majoring in computer science and minoring in math. And then after that, I ended up going straight to grad school at Carnegie Mellon out in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, where I did my master's in data analytics with concentration of machine learning. And while I was out there, that was when I was introduced to the Premier College intern program, uh, the PISA program. And I took that opportunity to intern at the Pentagon under SAF SA, which is studies and analysis. And then after completing my internship with them, I, I moved back out here to California and transitioned to the US Space Force under Space Systems Command to do my PAC rotations. Very cool, quite the impressive career path, Eric. Congratu congratulations on your recent graduation in December. All right, last up is Kaya. Kaya, why don't you take a moment, introduce yourself, tell us how you arrived at where you are today. Thank you. Hi, everyone. I'm Kaya Fleming. I did my PSIP internship last summer here at Randolph Air Force Base in Texas. I graduated from Texas State this past December with a minor in animal science and a major in psychology. 
And so I just transitioned to PAC this past February as part of the HR staffing team for engineering and science. Very cool. And I'm sure you're off and running to a wonderful career path, Kaya. I'm looking forward to learning from you, Grace and Eric, about the opportunities that AFCS has provided for you and other graduates. All right, before we do, let's take a second to get to know our audience with the first poll of the evening. Audience, which of the following best describes your interest in AFCS's internship programs? We'll pop that up here on screen for you. All right, is it A, hands-on real-world training, B, a rewarding career following completion, C, the exciting mission, or D, the federal benefits package? We'll give you about five to 10 seconds to answer. Go ahead and lock in your vote, and we'll go over them here in a second. Just another few seconds. All right, looks like 54% of you said hands-on real-world training describes your interest in AFCS's internship programs. Followed up with 31%, a rewarding career following completion. 12% said the exciting mission and 4% said the federal benefits package. All right, believe it or not, uh, let's see here. We're gonna get back to our interns and just out of curiosity, how did each one of you learn about AFCS's internship opportunities? Kyle, let's stick with you. If you'd be so kind to get that ball rolling for us. Yes, so for me, my sister actually completed this program before me quite a few years ago, um, and she outplaced just last year. So when I saw her do it, I was like, this seems like such a great opportunity. So I followed in her footsteps and continued down the same path. Well, it sounds like brilliance runs in the family, Kaya. <laughs> Eric, how about you? How'd you first learn about AFCS's internship opportunities? Yeah, my, my graduate program had a lot of people that were coming out of some of the military academies like West Point, the Air Force Academy, and the Naval Academy. Mm -hmm. And through them, they kind of introduced, introduced me to the civilian service. And that's how I kind of got my start in the Air Force, thanks to them. Very awesome. All right, Grace, last but not least here, how about you? How did you come to discover AFCS had these internship opportunities? I actually heard about it through like word of mouth, which I think is one of the most popular ways. But uh, one of the logistic field coordinators, Mr. Curtis Briggs, had like a speaking outreach program here at Robbins Base. And I was able to get in touch with him and we set up a couple phone interviews. I sent them my transcript and my resume. And then after that, I just received the um, official like job offer and got started in this like summer of 23. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we're so glad you're here, Grace. All right, Eric, I want to start with you for the next question. Can you tell the audience about the process of what being accepted looked like for your PSIP internship? What was that like? Yeah, personally for me, uh, my, my application process was pretty last minute. Um, I was visiting one of my friends that lived out in Washington, D.C. during a trip while I was in grad school. And through their parents, one of them worked in the kind of personnel center of the Air Force. Mm -hmm. And they asked for my resume and I passed it to them, which eventually after being circulated around, I was recommended to join this PSIP program, the Premier College Intern Program. And I jumped on that opportunity and I'm, I'm very happy I did. So a little bit of word of mouth as well, knowing some people, you know, yep. networking, that's good. All right, Kaya, how about you? Did you have a similar experience? No, mine was actually quite different. So I applied for the PAC program the year before I actually started. Um, I was transferring between schools at the time, so I didn't have quite enough credits for it. Um, but they notified me a year later, and I had completely forgotten that I even applied. And they called me and were like, hey, we have your resume. We want to see if you're still interested. And I was like, yes, definitely. I want to do this. So Very cool. Well, thank you for sharing. All right, Grace, if you don't mind, why don't you share your experience with the audience, see like what the acceptance was like? Um, well, just after a little bit of time of conversing back and forth with both the uh, logistics field coordinators, Mr. Briggs and Mr. Steve Wright, um, who have also become two of my mentors in my Air Force career, which I'm very grateful for them. Um, I received my FJO, my uh, firm job offer on March 22nd of last year. And then I began the NEO, which is the newcomer's orientation on May 8th. And overall, the whole process for me went really smoothly. Um, both of my coordinators were very helpful explaining what I needed to do and what the next steps would be for me. So I'm just very grateful that I had them to be there for me. Very cool. I love the shout outs too, Grace. Now, you, now that you've had a chance to kind of reflect on it, do you have a favorite moment during your internship that you wouldn't mind sharing? Like, was there something cool that stood out that really kind of let you know you made the right decision? I would say my favorite part would be attending the symposium at Wright Pad. 
Mm -hmm. Um, that was probably one of the best things it got, it gave me a chance to see just how big just the simple internship can be because I met so many people from all around the U S that got accepted into the air force and they all have the same kind of hopes and dreams, you know, of what they could do to help the government and, you know, help the mission and everything. So there were many speakers that took a lot of time to explain not just the benefits, but also, you know, what we as civilians do for the air force and, you know, to help our airmen. So that was great and a lot of time to, you know, learn from them. And so I'm just, I mean, I'm keeping my fingers crossed that maybe I can get another uh, chance to, you know, kind of go TDY or maybe, you know, meet other people. So I'm looking forward to it. Very cool. And for those of you that don't know the acronym TDY, TDY actually stands for Temporary Duty Yonder. So look that one up sometime on your favorite web browser. All right. Uh, Eric, how about you? Do you have a favorite moment as an intern that you could share with us in the audience? Yeah, like Grace mentioned, um, I enjoyed the chances I got to travel. I was able to go out to Salt Lake City in Utah as well as out to New Jersey. Um, but for me, my favorite moment was the project that I ended up getting placed on as I was there interning. Um, I think the office that I was with did a great job placing me in a program that built upon the things I was doing in school. And so I did a lot of machine learning and large language model development and research with them during my time there. And so I I think it was very rewarding in that aspect. I really like that they put you on those real world projects doing kind of important, you know, work and, and model development, especially at the Pentagon. I wonder if the private sector has anything similar like that as far as opportunities go. All right, Kaya, what about you? What was your favorite internship moment? Um, for me, my moment, my favorite moment was probably the moment that I came on. I came on alongside a pipeline group. So we went through a two and a half week HR boot camp course. And I feel like that little course right there gave me the chance to network faster than coming on and like getting right into a team being like, oh, how do I do this? How do that? How do I do that? Um, but this coming on this HR boot camp made it feel way better to be in a more controlled environment where I could ask questions. And I hear that's a new program too. It's nice that they didn't throw you right into the fire, but kind of provided that like training, the transition, which brings me to my next question. Do you feel like your schooling adequately prepared you for your internships? Like how have you discovered the real world compares to the academic world? Let's, uh, Grace, you want to answer that one first? Sure. Um, okay. For me, one of the things that I told the uh, field coordinators during my interview was that I honestly didn't have any like academic or professional work experience in the logistics. So I was a little bit nervous coming into this. I felt like I was coming into a, an arena unarmed and unprepared, if I'm honest. But uh, thankfully, I met a lot of really helpful, nice people in my uh, division that were kind of, you know, like explaining it to me, giving me the rundown of it, because there's so much to learn, uh, even in just logistics, I'm sure there's more in the different, uh, you know, departments that you go into. But um, I have noticed that a little bit of my business administration degree is kind of starting to kick in. So it's slowly but surely, I think, is building. But if I'm honest, I think just having a summer, the, just the summer to learn so much is kind of, you know, hard to do. Because if you're trying to retain everything you're learning, then it's kind of hard to, you know, come back and, you know, be able to remember it all. <laughs> yeah, regurgitate everything that they taught you. <laughs> exactly, yes. <laughs> yeah. Eric, how about you? How does the, what you learned in school kind of compare to the real world experiences of your internship? Yeah, from, from a purely technical sense, I think I was pretty prepared when I came in. For me, though, the biggest challenge was that I didn't come from a military family or have a lot of the acronym and organizational knowledge um, that I was kind of thrown into as you, as you join the Air Force Civilian Service. So initially for me, it was trying to understand the language that was spoken, all the different acronyms. And eventually like I worked, I worked through that, but it was, that was kind of my initial thing that I wasn't prepared for when I joined. Yeah. Well, it sounds like you caught on pretty quickly. Kaya, do you have anything to add to the real world internship experiences? Um, yeah, for me, I would say um, my schooling experience provided me some tremendous networking opportunities, but my psychology degree didn't really align with the specific route that I'm on right now, um, as it did give me like the tools and capacity to excel at my new HR role. It's it doesn't quite align with the science and engineering that I'm doing right now, as opposed to the psychology and animal science that I studied. Yeah. You know, and I think it's totally normal to not pursue a role that perfectly aligns with your major. That's why we offer all these different opportunities of our, a variety of career fields and stuff like that, because even if we don't have that perfect match, 
we have something close that will allow you to apply what you've learned in your undergrad training. So that's good. All right, Kaya, I'm curious about the topic of mentorship. Have there been people in your internship program who have kind of taken you under their wing? Yes. So when I started as a PSIP, I was assigned one mentor. Mm -hmm. And as I attended the symposium during the summer, I gained three other mentors. And I feel like they all have very different perspectives and ways to help me grow and move forward. And I feel like it's very impactful having these mentors. Yeah, I love the fact that you had multiple perspectives. It's always good to kind of see it through different lenses and stuff. So that's really cool. Thanks for sharing. Eric, how about you? Any mentors or anybody that's helped you along uh, the way over your course, the course of your internship? Yeah, of course. Um, during my time as a PSIP intern, my biggest mentor ended up being my direct supervisor. Um, he mm -hmm. was very committed to just building the people's careers that were under him. And so that was very helpful. Um, also, while I was out at the PSIP symposium at Hill Air Force Base in Salt Lake City. I was mm -hmm. able to meet the chief of Air Force Civilian Service Force Renewal Programs, uh, Mr. Ed Bujan, and a couple other key mentors. And from there, I was able to be introduced to people that worked out here at Space Systems Command in El Segundo. And that was how I initiated that conversation of after I finished my time as a PSIP, how could I transition and move, move locations to somewhere I would like to work um, full time after. Awesome. Thanks. Grace, what about you? Anything to add on this topic? Mentors? Uh, well, unlike Ty and Eric, I actually did not have a mentor assigned to me when I got into my division, um, nor did I really get any time to work and learn from my supervisor. But um, during my time at the symposium, I did get the chance to actually meet my field coordinators in person, get to know them, they got to know me. And so before that symposium ended, I asked both of them, Mr. Wright and Mr. Briggs, if they would be my mentor for when I come back in the pack and, you know, for the rest of my Air Force career, at least as a civilian. And of course, yeah. they were both very happy to, you know, do that and, you know, be able to give me all the tips and information they could. Um, you know, I'd, I'd like to take a moment to brag on Mr. Wright and Mr. Briggs, because I feel like they were the two that really took me under their wings. And they, you know, helped me with every little process, every little step that came to the process. They really pushed everything. They made me feel supported. They made me feel, you know, like I was, you know, ready for this. And I'm grateful to have both their mentorship and their friendship in my career. And um, and then probably about two to three weeks before my internship ended, I was talking with one of the other supervisors in my division, who I actually happen to work for now, um, his name is Mr. J Jerry Wheeler. I asked him if he could possibly be my mentor for when I come back too, because he was also very informative. He was very helpful. He's like, you know, look, if there's anything you need or any questions, you know, by all means, I'm here for you. And, um, but like I said, actually, when I started back in March of this year, I got transferred to his team. And so it's great to be able to work for him, but have his guidance as well. Yeah. I love the fact that like you recognize that you needed a mentor or even more than one at times. We don't always have to have somebody assigned to us, but we can seek those individuals out, the ones that we make connections with and, you know, kind of lean on their experience. So good on you. Very cool. Yeah. yeah. And it's good to have one right here at the base with me so I can kind of immediately go to him for, hey, what should I do with in this situation or how would you handle this? So I've got yeah. him like right there with me. <laughs> Yeah, no, that's really good. I love that. I love it. <laughs> it's good to have one local, have a few out there. It's okay to have more than one. So very cool. Exactly. Love it. Uh, Kaya, I want to circle back to you for a second, because there was something that you said that really stuck out to me. Uh, you spoke of how your sister did the internship program before you. So you already kind of knew it was a good opportunity. Could you tell us what it was about your sister's experience that made you decide like, yeah, I want to do this. I want to follow in her footsteps. Yeah. So when I, I kind of found it appealing how the Air Force helped her grow professionally. So she started on an HR track, um, but they encouraged her to go more towards a training route, mm -hmm. do some training roles. And I didn't know that she was quite interested in becoming a trainer, but I found it interesting how the Air Force allowed that kind of growth and that they worked with her in a way that let her grow into her career in a different path than what she began as. I. I thought that it was like so cool there, helping her become way more successful than what she thought she would. And as I said before, she outplays early and I didn't even know that that was something that you could do. So her example showed me just what a great opportunity this could do. Um, and the way that her team treated her, I got a sense that they really valued her as a team member. That's awesome. It makes me smile when people feel valued because, you know, for me, it really kind of helps solidify that happy work environment. There's nothing like, like when you feel valued, like 
yeah, really fit, you know, and, and it just makes you feel important. That's a good thing. Grace, I want to ask you a follow-up question of something you said as well. Um, you related how you knew that you wanted to get into federal space and work for the government. Can you explain what about like a federal position or the public sector opportunity really appealed to you? Well, um, I've lived in Warner Robins for about nine years now. Mm-hmm. And when we moved up here, we're like very close to the base. We're about maybe 20, 25 minutes from the base. Mm-hmm. So almost anywhere you go and like the store, the mall, any restaurant, and you mention the base and you hear someone talking about the base, you're always hearing them talk like, about the vent about the benefits that the government offers or about kind of like what Kaya said, how much like there's such a broad spectrum that you can try out with until you find that one thing that really really clicks with you. You know, they give you many chances to find your place in the Air Force. Um and so just the idea of be able to be a part of something and learn so much and yet in the end be given a very like rewarding career that's very stable. And very like, you know, you know, you're going to be in good hands if you, you know, if you join and if you get in. So I would think I would say that like not only just the benefits that the government offers, but that stability and that safeness that you feel that was what really stood out to me. And that was what made me be like, okay, this this is what I want. You know, how do I get it now? Yeah, I love it. When I was an Air Force recruiter a long time ago, we used to call that job security. And it was a a big selling point for the Air Force. (laughs) Um, you know, I wouldn't, I wonder if you wouldn't mind sharing that, like, what, if anything, surprised you most about AFCS internships? Just how helpful everyone is at the base. Everyone that I met here at Robin's Base, everyone that I met at the uh, symposium, and just how knowledgeable they are in their field. I mean, you've got your, from everyone from your, like, logistic management specialist, um, your SMEs, your, you know, um, special, or, yeah, special matter program, or no, um, subject matter experts. Mm-hmm. I was trying to figure that one out. <laughs> but you have your SMEs, your contractors, you have your PSM, like the product support um, manager. So they know so much in what they do, and they're yet so willing and helpful to, you know, just take you in and be like, here, this is what I know about this. You know, here's my wow. tips, and here's my, you know, here's what will help you in your career. So everyone's just been very eager to share their expertise, and I don't think – I haven't come across one person that's not like that. You know, I have to, I have to level with you. I struggled with this me thing too for a long time. I kept thinking people were talking about, you know, Captain Hook's little yes. minion. I was like, yes. what, what is this? What is this me guy? And then somebody's like, S M E, subject matter expert. I'm like, exactly. Okay, yeah, cool. Yeah, no, I totally knew that. So <laughs> yeah, I, I you just play it off like, okay, yeah, I know exactly what you're talking yeah, about. Yeah, totally. <laughs> In the back All of my right. head, I'm picturing Captain Hook and Smee, you know, just fighting the gator. <laughs> All right, Kaya, how about you? Is there anything about your internship that came as a bit of surprise for you? Yeah, I kind of want to piggyback off of what Grace just said. Um, And I agree with her. I think that for me, I didn't realize that everyone would be so helpful across the board with their willingness to help. You can ask any question you want and somebody will have the answer that you're looking for. Especially in HR, things change so quickly, so fast. Every single day, there's something new coming in or something a new rule or new something but everyone is so helpful and willing to help um and i think that's just so amazing you know to me i I think about that like as both of you were talking about this and i keep hearing it and and it just i'm always willing to help folks but i think what it equates to is happiness in the workplace when people are happy they're willing to help you know when they're grumpy and unhappy people are a little bit more closed off so it just kind of has that has that communication flow constantly being open and being willing to to mentor to teach to help to you know share experiences and and internal and external networking so very cool uh eric same question what surprised you about your internship experience would you mind sharing yeah of course i think for me my biggest surprise was the size of the civilian workforce in general Uh, specifically in the technical sense i fall under the cyber cyber and it career field and seeing how many civilians worked um, so closely with contractors, uh, industry leaders, active duty military. It was really interesting to me because I never knew anything about that um, opportunity before coming in as a PSIP. And so I think that was the biggest surprise for me and really cool to get a feel for while I was interning. So do you find that you're working more with active duty or is it mostly civilian? I think for me, it kind of has changed depending on what location I've been at. Mm-hmm. While I was a piece of intern at the Pentagon, my office specifically was probably a 75 to 25 mix of civilians to active duty. 
But now that I'm here in Space Systems Command a little bit further away, um, it's probably 50-50. Uh, okay. I've noticed that as I've gotten further from the Pentagon, it, you get more um, military. Interesting. Uh, I like that. Um, Grace, same question. What's the mix like for you? I would have to say mostly civilians and contractors. Um, mm -hmm. We do have a small number of military in our building, but I would say the contractors and civilians kind of outnumber them. Um, currently, the the two programs that I'm learning is one, I'm learning with the contractor that's teaching me her program. And then I'm also learning from a civilian teaching me her program. Very cool. All right. I'm going to do something off the cuff, totally unscripted. Pop quiz audience. How many civilians are in the Air Force? How many? Just give me a rough guesstimate real quick here. We'll see how bad we can blow up that chat real quick because I'm going to answer it in just a second. So I figure that each of you would have different mixes in the workplace. We're going to go to Kaya next, let her answer. But here we go. Three seconds left. Two, one. Okay. Who said 170,000 plus? Anybody? Anybody? Pat yourself on the back if you were even close. That is how many civilians we have at Air Force Civilian Service. Those are civilians not wearing a uniform, no military service. Those are just folks like you and me, the panelists. We're all doing that job, supporting the Air Force. All right, Kaya, I'm gonna shift topics with you. I actually thought about something I wanna bring up. What advice do you have for students, for our audience out there that wanna follow in your footsteps? Yeah, I would say if you're not sure what you wanna do um, after graduating, I would say apply for Peace Super PAC um, just because it gives you so many networking opportunities. And if you do decide to go this route, I say if you're able to attend the symposium, do go. You can talk to so many different people from different career fields that can give you insight on what they've been doing. And you can kind of compare to what, um, what workload you've been doing as well. And I think that it's the best opportunity to kind of help you broaden your knowledge on a different career path and learn what may be right for yourself. I like that. Good advice. You know, I have to echo that symposium. I actually was able to attend as a marketer last year, the, the Hill Air Force Base one in Salt Lake. Wow, huge, amazing event. Very cool. All the smiling faces, the knowledge, the networking, really cool. So I, I echo that. Definitely take part in one of those if you have the opportunity. All right, Grace, how about you? Do you have any advice that you'd like to give our listening audience about what they can do to kind of increase their odds of success in, as an AFCS intern? Well, at first, I would agree with Kaya. Like, you know, if you're kind of in doubt and you're wondering, you know, exactly what career you want to go into or what you want to do, um, but you are curious about getting into the Air Force, then I would for sure go for the piece of internship because in the long term, it will pay off. You know, if you enjoy it and you, you know, you do well at your task that you're given, then mm -hmm. it's going to pay off. But I think I would want to add in the um, tip of just like, don't let it intimidate or overwhelm you once you get in. Because when I got in last year, I was very overwhelmed, <laughs> very like, and very scared of not wanting to one mess up. But I was also scared, like, you know, am I going to be able to remember any of this when I come back to the pack? Um, and so I didn't want that to like take away um, from the chance of me getting a kind of network, me getting to, you know, learn what I could. Um, so, you know, just like, don't let it do that to you. Um, but if you are, you know, wanting to get in, I would just say, you know, just go in, just, you know, feet first and, you know, just see what's out there for you. And, you know, you'll find the you'll find the thing that's meant for you for sure. Yeah. I think, I think that's kind of the, the same or the norm for most things like that fear of the unknown, just like, just, just go for it. You know, if you're even thinking exactly. about what's, what's the harm, you know? Yeah. And, so. it's, and it's only for three months. So, you know, while there is so much to learn in three months, if it doesn't work for you or you find something better after the internship that's more fitted for you, then, you know, that that's okay. Yeah, you, know, you gave it a try and that's what matters. Absolutely. All right, Eric, what advice would you give to an applicant going through the application and interviewing process? What, what advice do you have? Yeah, one, one thing I've taken away while I've been here is that the impact of kind of the work that I do goes beyond just me, um, not within, not just within my immediate team, but also to the warfighters and like everyone else in between there. So knowing that, I would probably give some advice to be thinking about the kind of impact that they want to have on the Air Force mission, how, how they can contribute to the Air Force and be a part of something bigger than just themselves. I love that. Uh, you know, as a former Air Force member for active duty, one of our core values was service before self. And it's, it's really cool to hear such a young person like yourself echo that, that the mission, something bigger. 
I, I think that's really cool, very noble. So thank you for sharing. All right, Kaya and Grace, would you all like to add anything to that? Yeah, um, I would say similar to what Eric just said, when, if you're going into your piece of per pack interview, I recommend considering what specific field you're applying for, what that can do to help others in that position, and not necessarily how it can just benefit yourself. Very cool. Grace, anything else? Uh, kind of just like what Kaya and Eric said, you know, that um, once you get in, you know, just kind of think of this as something bigger than yourself and, you know, how can you help the Air Force with their mission, you know, to, you know, fight the good fight, as they say. But um, I like what Eric said, you know, once you get in, like, don't take it for granted, because this is quite the quite the rare opportunity to, you know, get in. If you're in and, you know, you get to be a part of this, it is something very big. And even though it may seem like what you're doing is kind of small and tedious, you know, it it, con it contributes to the big matter and the big picture. Um, I remember last year during the symposium, we had a major uh, major general Dunn uh, speak to all the interns for a while. And one of the comments that he made that really stood out to me was he said that civilians wear the cloth of the nation on their heart. And that just really stood out to me when he said that because it made me realize, one, that this is such a big picture that I'm a part of. And two, it just gave me that really deeper appreciation you know, of being able to be like, yeah, you know, I'm a part of the Air Force, you know, I'm, I'm helping out in my little ways, you know, and soon I'll be able to do, you know, bigger things to help, help fight the good fight. <laughs> a smart individual, that General Dunn, huh? <laughs> yes, very. <laughs> All right, y'all, let's talk PAC assignments. Can you describe how you were assigned your PAC position following the completion of your PSIP internship? Did you like have a good idea what your PAC assignment would be? Uh, explain that to me, Eric, let's start with you. Yeah, I think I touched on it a little bit before, but while I was a PSIP, I, I knew that I wanted to come back to California because I grew up in Northern California. Mm -hmm. And so while I was a PSIP and during the Hill Symposium, I kind of voiced my opinion saying, I'd love to come back as a PAC, but ideally I'd like to be in California. And so knowing that and gearing, I guess, networking what, with the intention of this is the kind of career field I want to go into it really allowed people and my mentors to kind of advocate and fight for me. And through them, I was able to meet Miss Amy Nakai um, from Space Systems Command out here in El Segundo. And when she heard that I would love to come out to California, she jumped at the opportunity to increase the civilian workforce out here. And so I was I was very excited to, to come out when I finished my piece of very cool. I love the insight, uh, definitely. And I'm sure the audience does as well. All right, real quick question, Eric. What's better, Northern California or Southern California? I promise we won't tell your folks. I enjoy Southern California because it's a little more sunny. Okay, there you go. Cool. All right, Grace, same question. I actually kind of found out a little bit more about my pack assignment when it was, when I had my one-on-one -on -one with my PSM, my product support manager, Ms. Um, Nicola Bruno. Mm -hmm. um, when I had my time with her, she kind of wanted me to just give her an honest point of view of how my experience went in her division. And while I had a really great time learning and networking with people, I did not get the opportunity to really have the hands-on training that I needed from my supervisor nor from the from um, the team. Mm -hmm. So, um, could I work better with hands-on? I'm more of a team working person. So I just kind of gave her like my honest opinion. I, I meant it in no, no like bad disrespectful way for the supervisor that I was assigned to, she was very helpful. She was, you know, she she was there for me. But mm -hmm. when, after my one-on-one -on -one with her, she kind of asked me, she goes, well, when you come back as a pack next year, would you be like, to, would you like to be given the chance to, you know, possibly I can move you in with a different supervisor? And I said, you know, yes, if it's possible, you know, and the space is available on their team, then that would be great. Um, and then I would say probably about a month and a half before I came back, um, in March, I received the email that, from her that said, you know, you're going to be moved into uh, Mr. Jerry Wheeler's team. He's got a place for you, and he's very excited to work with you. And since March and everything this year, it's been like a whirlwind difference. Um, I've gotten the hands-on training that I needed. I've gotten, the, I've got, I've got the guidance that I needed. I've gotten the mentorship that I needed. And so, you know, I'm just excited for just even my first year rotation. <laughs> You know, I want to key in on something that you just talked about, and that's, that's I, I think, something that doesn't always happen. You know, at least in my experience, this is my first position with Air Force Civilian Service, and I absolutely love it. But what you said was basically your supervisor 
fought for feedback, right? They, that's, that's a term we use. And, and they asked you for your input. Like, give me the, the honest truth. And you utilize that opportunity to professionally kind of explain what was, you know, what you saw could use some improvement. And, and they took what you said and put you into a, a spot where you fit better. I love that. Exactly. And I'm so yeah, happy she was, for you. I was very grateful that she did that. And, you know, she told me that she wanted my honest opinion because she wants to make it better for when future interns come to, uh, to our division yeah. and they're under her branch. She would like, you know, hey, what can I do to make it different and better for future interns? And so I, I was very grateful that she was very open and, you know, respectful of my of my and thoughts. I so I guarantee that she appreciated your 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 honesty just as much mm -hmm. as you appreciated the opportunity. So thank you for sharing. Yes. <laughs> All right, I want to discuss something near and dear to me, and that's work life balance. I think it's important in any career. How do you all manage work life balance, and why do you think it's important in any career growth? Kaya, let's start with you. Yeah. So um, since I work from home, my team is hybrid. So some days we may go into the base to work, um, but most of the time we pretty much work from home. We telework. Um, our team kind of has an agreement that as soon as our scheduled duty day is done, our day is done. That's it. We don't talk about it after that. And we try we to not take it home with us. Um, so we're not texting each other, asking work related issues. Once the day is done, we'll kind of leave it till the next morning or the next uh, duty day. But we do talk outside of work. Our team um, does get togethers and luncheons. But I think that it's really good. The Air Force really stresses work time is work time and home time is time for you to do whatever you please. So I think that's really good. It values maintaining a healthy work life balance. Awesome. I agree wholeheartedly. Eric, how about you? What is, what, what's it like over in SoCal? Yeah, I agree. I really appreciate the emphasis the Air Force puts on work life balance. I've seen firsthand how like friends and family have been somewhat required to bring work home with them in the evenings and on weekends and how, how that just impacts their ability to enjoy life outside of work. And so with the Air Force focusing on bringing your best during the job hour, like during your working hours, bringing your best to the job and then giving you the space to be your best self on your own time. I think that was really important and something that I took into account as to why I wanted to come back after my uh, piece of internship. Yeah, it really lets you kind of go home and, and like refresh, come back ready to go the next day, like just feeling good that you had that downtime. I think it's important. Right. Grace, how about you? Have you found you've been able to kind of maintain that healthy balance between work and home life and logistics? Um, yeah, I have been able to, you know, um, I agree with uh, what Kai and Eric said that, you know, the Air Force itself really pushes that, you know, to, you know, like, hey, when you're working, you're you're working you're focusing on whatever task or may come up or whatever you know training that you need to complete you get it done in your work hours but also they're very encouraging as like you know once your day ends then you know you leave you don't worry about it don't like you know like stress about it you know because once you get home you know you may have other responsibilities you may have a family you may have you know just a a husband or wife, you know and there's other simple responsibilities that come up appointments and things you have to do that you want to try to, you know, keep a good balance of. Um, so it is nice that, you know, you work when you work and then once you get off, you can do what you want. I, you know, I find that very, you know, welcoming and, you know, I, I'm glad that they do that. I'm glad it's not like one of those sticklers that, you know, make you focus on work 24 seven or you, they tell you, Hey, you need to bring your workload home because you haven't gotten this done yet. And so, you know, and I have seen the negative impact I can have. I, I as well. So I'm really happy that, that the three of you have found a good work-life balance. All right, now that we've established, obviously we all agree that the importance of maintaining that healthy work-life balance, it, my next question is really loosely related on that. What does your AFCS team do to support team building away from the base? Like what kind of recreational activities do y'all have access to? Kaya, why don't you kick it off for us? Yeah, so my team once a month as we are a hybrid, um, we do get together, we'll have a luncheon or a team building activity that we do. So everyone will kind of suggest what they think will be a fun activity. Then once we come to a consensus on it, we'll do that. The last thing that we did here recently was the escape room. And then we went to Dave and Buster's afterwards. Um, so we always try to do something fun as a team to get our mind off of work and connect together, especially if you're a new person on the team. Um, it can be kind of weird to connect if you're just through a screen. Um, but of course, it is it's not mandatory for us to 
go to these events just because that would make it seem like work and would defeat the purpose. But I do think that it's a great opportunity to get everyone to know each other and connect in an easy environment that doesn't feel intimidating. Yeah, I agree wholeheartedly. Eric, anything? Well, actually, let me let me ask this. Like, what sort of team building exercise, before we move on to the next question, I want to give Eric uh, a chance to answer as well. Like, what do you guys do outside of work over at Space Command? Yeah, I think for me, a lot of my team building activities are more informal. Um, due to the projects I've been on, it's been pretty busy, high paced um, tempo of work. And so usually like maybe groups of four or five with the team that I go into work with, we'll play like small games in the morning before work or be able to take 10 minutes between meetings and just catch up about things outside of work. Things like that kind of facilitate that more friendly and fun environments. Um, but again, I'm very early in my tenure here at uh, Space Systems Command. So right now I have a lot that I'm playing catch up and drinking from the fire hose. So I think I think maybe given more time, I'll have more of those formal team building activities. Awesome. Well, I know at, at some bases, like civilian employees take advantage of like all the different activities, like different bases have different things from learning to fly, earning like pilot's license. I know when I was in New Jersey at one point, like they had concert series, skydiving, boating, like all kinds of things. One thing that I've learned is that the same amenities and recreational op opportunities that are available to like an a Air Force base's active duty airmen are also open to a civilian airman as well. So even if your teams aren't getting together, go ahead and try to take advantage of those items when they they, they come out because they're they're really cool. They're really fun. Grace, let's let's before I move on to the next question, I want to give you the chance to answer the same thing. I want to know what y'all are doing. What kind of opportunities have you had to participate in, like team building or even your base amenities? Anything cool? Uh, I didn't really have anything um, during my time as a PSIP last summer, but um, I didn't get the chance to really participate in any team building exercises or activities or even luncheons. But um, since I've come back in March, I have had a little bit more team interaction. Um, just a, like maybe two weeks ago, we had a burger burn out in one of the parks on base here. And there was, you know, the hamburgers, hot dogs, you know, cold sodas on ice. And then they had a cornhole tournament which was really fun. I didn't even make it past round one, but you know, I still participated, yeah. me and my partner, we had a whole bunch of fun and a, my uh, competitive side came out a little bit. Very but cool. um, kind of like what Eric said, you know, I'm so early on in my PAC program that i um, kind of been doing a lot more training and work stuff. So I've heard of future, you know, team building exercises events come up. So I'm looking forward to those coming up and, you know, being able to jump in on those. Well, I, I love a good burger burn and I, I love cornhole. <laughs> it's, yes. it's fun. So hopefully you'll have some more of those. All right, Grace, I, I've been itching to ask you this. Imagine a friend of yours is sitting across from you and they're on the fence about choosing an internship with the Air Force or an internship somewhere else. What advice would you give them? would just make sure that they knew just how much stability that you're getting with the Air Force, you know, because um, with that stability, I think it gives you a peace of mind. You don't have to worry about like, you know, if there was a possible layoff, you know, come up or like maybe a reconstruction of the company and they were just randomly laying off people. You have a lot more stability in the government and they in ways take better care of you, I think. Um, so that's very comforting. And you know, if you if you choose a career with the AFCS, it can kind of, like I said early on, it kind of seem intimidating, you know, in the beginning. But, um, you know, as you get into it, you're learning and you're remembering things. And, you know, if you're given that hands on training, it kind of just becomes second nature, at least during the work hours. It kind of be, just become, become second nature, like just riding a bike. I know that, you know, I'm going to be sticking with my pack hmm, career and everything. And even when I'm done with my three years, I'm going to, you know, just go right back into it. And I'm excited to see how far I can go. I'm very happy to hear that. <laughs> That's really cool. Eric, uh, anything to add on the topic? If you had that friend sitting on the fence and kind of like, uh, internship, not with AFCS or or with AFCS, what would you, what advice would you give them? Yeah, acknowledging I may be a little biased. Um, I'd advise them to go the AFCS route if given the opportunity. I think it's a lot more difficult trying to get your foot in the door in the government space as compared to the private industry. And so having that three month internship to take that opportunity to test the waters, see if this is a career that you would really enjoy pursuing. It's a great opportunity with kind of no, no strings attached um, before moving into that 
pack program, which I'm, I'm really enjoying now. And I'm very happy that I, I took that opportunity to, to explore it. Very cool. All right. I know we're getting close to the end of the show. I have a couple little things I got to touch on before. So we're going to jump into the second and final poll of the evening. So audience, listen up. What type of learning environment would you prefer during an AFCS internship? Is it A, structured training programs and workshops, B, hands-on experience through project work, C, flexibility to explore different career paths within the Air Force, or D, combination of classroom learning and practical application? And we'll give you about five to 10 seconds to answer. And then once everyone's locked in, we'll go ahead and go over the results. All right, looks like we're almost there. All right, so wow, 40% of you said hands-on experience through project work. Uh, second highest answer, 33%, is a combination of classroom learning and practical application, uh, followed up by flexibility to explore different career paths within the Air Force, and finally, structured training programs and workshops. So awesome. All right, panelists, we're going to get back to you. This is a two-part question. The topic of our webinar tonight is empower your ambition. With that in mind, where do you see yourself in five years? Eric, I'm going to start with you. Yeah, for, for me in five years, I think I will go and give private industry, industry a try. Like I mentioned, I didn't know that public sector was even an opportunity for me until right before my internship. So I think having the experience from both aspects is something I, I want out of my career. And I would say that the time I've had so far as a PSIP and I will have through my PAC and further career, I think it sets a really solid foundation for me, whether I go public or private sector. And it, I think it enriches just my overall knowledge base and experience that I can, I can draw from as I get older and go through my career more. Right on. Appreciate you sharing. All right, Kaya, you're up. Same question. Five years. For me, in five years, I think I see myself doing what I am right now. Um, before I started my PAC intern, I don't think I would have ever considered doing HR in any sense. But since my piece at uh, summer internship and now starting my PAC, I've learned just how much I absolutely love HR. Um, and I think that also maybe in five years, I'd like to do something a little bit more deeper into um, HR, maybe become a trainer or something where I can pass on what I've learned to others and point them um, further in their careers, help them guide, uh, help guide them to broaden their knowledge. Um, I like being an Air Force civilian. Um, all of my family has taken the em civilian employee route, and I think that I'm going to continue to follow that path. All right, I'm going to ask a totally random question. I did not hear you say anywhere in there that you have any type of rivalry with the sibling. Are you going to try to like trump her at some point? Do you like have hopes to be her boss one day? No, like, you guys no. Have anything going on there? Or <laughs> you? <laughs> no, absolutely not. Okay, so just everybody's got this mad respect for one another. That's that's cool. I like it. Awesome. All right. Last but not least, Grace, bring us home. Where do you see yourself in five years? Um. Definitely sticking with the civilian career um, service in the, um, in the Air Force. I've got a brother who's in the Army. I have a sister-in-law who's a civilian as well. So like, you know, Kai said, you know, that public service, you know, runs in the family and everything. So I'm just carrying that torch. <laughs> but um, I would definitely say I'm going to be, I would kind of hope to maybe get somewhere where I can use my business administration skills. So I don't know if that maybe somewhere as a, office administrator or maybe even like in HR. I've kind of been interested in that before in the past, but um, I kind of like what Kaya said. I think it would be amazing to get the opportunity to work for the um, Air Force Renewal Program because I, I love the idea of being able to give be, be, be given the chance to get the word out there and, you know, share my experience and story and just let people know like, you know, hey, this is a very tremendous opportunity. Um, and here's why, you know, I can go on and on, and on about it. Um, I think it'd be awesome to be able to help like the team, like Mr. Bujan and Ms. Sear, Ms. Hernandez, to help them get the word out, even if it's in Georgia, you know, um, I would love to do that. So, but yeah, I mean, cause I know from my experience and everything, I can definitely, you know, be willing to share my story and just, you know, share the, um, the benefits that this all offers. 
I love it. Absolutely love it. If you haven't already, make sure you connect with uh, Ed Bujan and the rest of the SWORD team, you know, like on LinkedIn and, and just send them an email, whatever you need to do at yeah, Microsoft Teams. That works too. If it works <laughs> on computer, mine, it doesn't always, but that's all right. Um, yeah, but connections, networking, it never stops, right? So definitely yeah. do that. Keep reaching out, keep touching base. There's always guest speaking opportunities and stuff. And like tonight, something that I wanted to mention to our audience, these folks here, like before this evening, or we had a, a dry run last night, but I never met these interns before. We asked for volunteers. They volunteered through networking, things like that, and they were more than willing to share their story. So this is not like one of those things where we're forcing them to say good things. Uh, we do have a script, but we love the answers. We love sharing our stories. So Grace, Kaya, Eric, thank you so much for being here this evening. With the time remaining, let's go ahead and open the floor for audience questions. Many of you have already submitted your questions through the Q&A box. We appreciate that. For those that haven't, go ahead and add them now. We'll try to answer as many as we can with the time remaining. So let me move over here. I have one that popped up specifically for Eric. Is the Space Force related to the Air Force, Eric? Yes. So in a similar way that kind of the Marines fall under the Navy, Space Force is its own branch of the military, but under the Air Force. So through AFPC and Air Force civilian careers, I still fall under, under this program um, while I'm out here with Space Force. Awesome. Thank you. All right. Uh, anyone can answer? What strategies and or techniques make you the most competitive in securing one of these various opportunities during the application process? Any one of y'all can answer. I would say as long as you show the drive for it and like not give up on, you know, checking in on your application or seeing like, hey, is there something else that I can do to kind of help push my application out there and get, you know, get my name and face out there. Um, as long as you're driven and you stay in touch with like the career field administrators, you know, and they see that passion and that energy and that drive of, hey, this is someone that really wants this. Okay, what can I do to help him or her, you know, get this? Cool. Kaya, Eric, you anything to add to that? Like what kind of strategies, techniques make you competitive? Yeah, I mean, I think as Grace kind of mentioned, the initiative to reach out, keep your name at the top of the list and show that this is an opportunity that you want to really commit yourself to be a part of that mission that's um, kind of more than just advancing your career, which is always a great part of the, the opportunity provided. But having having more of that wide ranging impact is something that I think is, is valued pretty highly when looking at applicants. Very cool. Uh, we did have a question come in for Kaya. It says, what does a normal day look like in HR for the AFCS? What type of activities are you assigned? Can you share anything with us? Yeah, so when you come in, when you first come on, you'll have a trainer. And of course, uh, you'll do a bunch of different trainings once you come on, just the normal. Um, but once you start working on your own, you'll be given a couple actions. And your, it'll kind of depend on which team you're on. You can either pick up your work or your supervisor or trainer will assign you some work. And it'll just kind of be um, doing some winemaze, which is kind of a management advisory. And then you'll create an announcement, like a job announcement, and you'll kind of work through that flow where um, assigning a job to somebody and giving the certificates out to the hiring managers of who applied, which applicants are best qualified, and then getting them onboarded. Cool, okay, so kind of like run the gamut of what it would look like, like from application or like you said, position description, the PD, putting it out there, all the way to getting them onboarded and, and bringing in members of Air Force Civilian Service. Yes. Okay, cool, thank you. All right, we had a question about uh, alignment, and I think this goes back to what we were talking about where the job isn't always like lined up exactly related to the degree or area of study. Um, it says, uh, let's see here, let's say those interested in applying like myself. Okay, so um, when it's not related to the degree or area of study, would it be fair to say those interested in applying like this audience member could use soft skills or hard skills that are transferable to the job? Like what key traits are important to be considered after matriculating through the program and entering the workforce as a civilian? Anybody can answer. 
Yeah, I mean, I'm happy to start it off. I think having those soft skills of the readiness to learn and really apply yourself to whatever position you end up working in. I know specifically for the PAC position, you do a couple rotations. So you get to kind of have a wider breadth of the different opportunities available. Um, and of course, you can always work with the different career field teams to try and find something that you might think is more suited to you. But yeah, those soft skills of really applying yourself to whatever opportunities you end up at um, is always a great way to start off and advance your career. All right. I have two more questions. We have one minute left. I'm going to try to hit them both. So anybody can answer with a yes or no. I don't want to elaborate too much. Do you have to be a PSIP first before applying for a PAC internship? No. Okay. So you got to know. Good. Awesome. Are there internships at every base? Yes. I think so. Yeah. <laughs> Well, I'll tell you what, I'll bring it home with us because that's all the time we have for this evening. But I'm going to give you a little tidbit here, audience. So listen up. First and foremost, thank you so much for keeping our lights on. We hope you all learned something new about AFCS's internship programs and just as importantly, have decided to apply for one. You will find everything you need to know at our AFCS website and specifically for the interns, go to afintern.com. I hope you all will join us next month on Wednesday, July 3rd at 6 p.m. We're going to be doing a behind the scenes look at civilian careers in intelligence. As always, space is limited, so be sure to register ahead of time. The link to register is going to be in the chat along with all the links that we've mentioned this evening. Be sure to subscribe on our site so you never miss a job opportunity or upcoming event. Just a reminder. Tonight's episode has been recorded. We'll be posting it along with all the resource links to the main AFCS website at afcivilianqueers.com, specifically aim higher. That's A-I-M-H-I-R-E. See what we did there? All right. Don't forget, you can follow us on all your favorite social platforms, LinkedIn, X, Instagram, and Facebook for more tips and information regarding Air Force civilian service. It is seven o'clock on the button. Thank you for jo Ooh, 701. Thank you for joining us. Until next time, y'all have a wonderful evening. Take care. Talk to you later.